FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. All right, folks, uh, we're going to hold Randy over another break, and I've I got to get to the lightning round, all kinds of great stuff for you, but I want to make sure we also get to Eugene Dokes, who has been kind enough to call into the show and talk to us a little bit about what went on on Saturday. Eugene was in charge of the operation there at the caucus. We've already established that there was a subcommittee that uh, Mr. Dokes did, in fact, the point, didn't have any Ron Paul people on it because he said one of the Ron Paul people who was there didn't really show up much. And so nobody represented it. And that's where they made the camera rule. And anyway, I just want to ask you one quick question, Mr. Dokes, before we actually move on to uh, what what is next, because that's what people want to know is what are we going to do with uh, all the energy and passion that conservatives were showing uh, at that particular event? But uh, were you coached uh, in terms of was was there because, you know, obviously there's a suspicion by some people that the establishment GOP and there are all these kind of Rockefeller Republicans and all these other people out there who were basically sure. pulling your strings and, uh, you know, ordering you to make sure that it went a certain way. Can you explain anything about that? Sure. sure. First of all, I would love to just put this out there. I don't owe anybody in the Republican in the Republican Party anything. You know, I, I became the chair, I became on the Central Committee because I thought it was the right thing to do. I thought that I could make a difference. I have not been here long enough to to make those types of friends that could pull my strings and tell me what to do. I think that there was just some mistakes. And before, I, I talked to one person the other day, and he told me, you know what, in, a lot of times it looks like conspiracy and it's just chaos. And that's exactly what it was the other day. No conspiracy whatsoever. Um, I was told by several people when I first got on the Central Committee is that when we have these caucuses, that the the Libertarian Party will try to take over the party. And you need to make sure, the caucus, and you need to make sure that you're firm, that they will try to take. And I think that I entered there at least with that mindset of, well, there's going to be a takeover. Don't know by who. Don't. So I wanted to make sure that the House rules were firm, that I was setting an example that, hey, I, I won't be pushed. I'll follow the rules if you follow the rules. And uh, at one point, I, uh, I think the second thing, I actually made another mistake. And, and I was told, I was given some bad advice, I think, when it comes to the, uh, the appointment of the chair. I was told that we could take a chair, uh, 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 an announcement for a chair. And if that same announcement, in that same sentence, it was said, well, I nominate this person and I close all the nominations, that that was fair and that was legal. And with my inexperience with Robert's rules and experience with the caucuses, I didn't know that that was not legal. And I think that that was, it, again, that was my fault because I should have looked into that more prior to the caucus because I should have expected that I would hear at least one like that because people want to take over. That's kind of the name of the, the game in the caucuses. And so I did allow for that type of uh, nomination, and which is what led to all those kind of conspiracy theories there. But I think that it was just a little bit of bad advice. It was confusion. and uh, But no one told me, hey, do it. It's not right, but do it anyway. That really wasn't the case. Who uh, – well, a couple of things. Who told you that the libertarians were going to cause problems? Well, I, I was told to go look into what had happened in 2008 in St. Charles County. And I was, you know, look at that and – there's always an issue with people wanting to take over, and uh, not necessarily, and I said that, but it wasn't just the Libertarians, because that wasn't just who was making all the ruckus right. at, that, uh, at, the, at the caucus. But I was told that, hey, there are special interest groups. There's people who have allegiance to certain leaders or to certain presidential candidates or have allegiance to certain other things other than the Republican Party and the fair process. So make sure that you uh, uh, consider that before huh. sharing the event. And so one of the things that we had hoped to do was have a fair process in which the delegates were proportioned out. Right. And, well, uh, and who, who, told, who told you that, though? It, by members of the, of the Central Committee uh, and people that had been around at the last caucus. None of whom were Ron Paul people, right? They were all Santorum or yeah. Romney people? 
Well, none of them who were who were Ron Paul people. That's right, because again, we yeah. really have only had two Ron Paul people on the Central Committee. One of them actually resigned recently, and the other one doesn't show up at all. Yeah. Um, so, so, so is that where the no camera thing came in? I mean, because I, I don't understand how the no camera thing played it. So, was the no camera thing brought in because you were told there were going to be trouble? There was going to be trouble, and you thought that by having no cameras there, that would reduce the chance of trouble. No, okay. um, you know, again, the, those two things were separate. I think they played a, a, a single point together, and they, and they both made a big deal together. But they were two separate things. Um, I don't know what the uh, subcommittee was, what the full thinking behind the no camera rule when the subcommittee presented it. But I, I do believe that they just wanted to afford people uh, some privacy and, and the right to cast their their vote and their allegiance yeah. to a certain leader without the whole world knowing who that was. Which, which doesn't make sense because it's a caucus. So you know what I mean. And sure. you agree, you agree with that because it is a caucus and it's wide open anyway. So that doesn't make sure. any sense. Now, who sure. who was it that advised you on the? On the rules, then the chair the, the, on the chairman rules, who was that who advised you? The subcommittee, also uh, the subcommittee, right. different members of the of the central committee, different people who who I've talked to about it, and we did try to take and, and I just think that there were some mistakes made. We tried to take into account the loose rules that the state had given us, but they were they were pretty general, and uh, so we didn't know for sure if we could do this. And so when I would show up to meetings, actually I would ask. Hey, is it okay to do this? Is it okay to do that? And, and I asked personally, is it okay to take a nomination? Because I kind of expected one of those to come up. And I personally asked, is it okay to take a nomination where it was nominated and what's called spiked all in the same sentence? And I was and I was told, yes, that is okay. Right. But I think that but that was actually something that I brought up. Yeah, let me ask you this, though, Eugene, uh, since you obviously are a fairly independent-minded person, obviously, when you look back on those who were advising you, do you get the sense that those who are advising you actually did have the integrity of the process in mind, or did they really have protecting the flank of their establishment guys in mind? I do think that they did have uh, uh, the integrity of the process in mind. They, we, what we were hoping to do, I think, was not have a full takeover of one particular group where they might only be represented by 1% of the county, but yet they would get all of the delegates. They didn't think that that was fair for St. Charles County. And I think the way that we went about trying to make that happen was just not uh, done perfectly. It yeah, because, perfect because, because you know, why, though? Because uh, that's, that's not the way the caucuses work. I mean, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why Ron Paul did so well in the caucuses around the country is because they know how to – they know how to do the caucus system, and so sure. if you if you have people who are in there advising you to railroad the system, and what I mean is that, that that's what they were doing. They were they were trying to change the caucus system so that it didn't go the way they didn't want it to go. Sure, I mean that's exactly sure. what they were doing. When you point that out, they were saying, "Well, wait, they don't want a certain population of this." Country. Well, that's but no, but in a caucus, that's how it works. The people who show up. And the people who are there and represented, they win. That's well, what it, I want to make it very clear that I don't think that anybody had any intentions on doing anything wrong. They, I think this is the way that we wanted it to go. However, there was full intentions on, hey, there is a possibility of a takeover. And, uh, you know, so I think the, the full focus was making sure that we had enough people there that fully represented the county. And uh, and all of the county's uh, views on a presidential candidate. Right, but you, you guys, focus. but you guys realize that's not your job to make sure that there are adequate numbers of people represented. Because what happens is a caucus is what it is. You have people come in, and those who are on fire and those who are represented win. And so it's not really the job of any kind of committee or party organization to make sure a certain number of people are represented. That's that's actually you guys running an election not the people running the election. And so I'm sure you understand why people are crazed about that a little bit. So, uh, but, sure. but hey, listen, uh, when it comes to what the future is going to entail, and we got to go because we're on a, on, a, on, a, on a tough situation and it needed to break, but I want to ask you, what's going to happen next? What's gonna, what did you guys decide will happen next? Well, I think that the first thing is to just, uh, we need to, there's two things that need to happen. We need to just make sure that the people of St. Charles County knows that they're, 
that there was an attention for integrity in the process. It didn't really play out that way. But we do care about what everybody in the county thinks, and we do want to make sure that everybody is fully represented. And, two, we want to make that representation happen. I don't know how that's going to take place yet on the talks with the state. And we're trying to make sure that uh, that St. Charles County is fully represented, but that's kind of out of my hands. It's more something that the state right. will end up uh, kind of delegating. Eugene Dokes, listen, it was uh, brave of you to come on and explain. I know you're getting a lot of heat, and I appreciate your honesty and your forthrightness in what's been going on. And obviously, um, you know, I'm gonna I'll help you any way I can to make sure that this. Um, process ends up working uh but i do appreciate you calling the program and uh thanks for being uh frank about what happened yes sir thank you all right that's eugene dunks almond in the morning you guys heard that didn't you you guys heard that didn't you all right we'll recap that when we come back nine six nine nine seven nine seven eight six six four five five nine seven nine seven, and I'm, I don't want to get into an attack Mr. Dokes here because I think he was manipulated I think he was used by some people and uh, and you heard it right there